Greetings and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, episode 94. Today is December 14th, 2023, a beautiful time, as we know, because we're shining. I hope you're shining your brightest today. Even getting out of bed, when you turn over and you look at yourself in the mirror, I want you to think about how beautiful you look, with or without makeup, with or without hair done, you know, just grateful for who you are as a as a wonderful person. To my entrepreneurs and my leaders who are running their own lives, be consistent with that. So today I want to talk specifically about removing the masks. We see that the masks have been removed. And I believe God is doing that favor for us as a protection, as a barrier of protection when we're wearing our armor. I believe that God is saying, I'm going to show you who this person is before they act out. They're going to, they're going to act out early. So you'll see the mask being removed. And then you make the decision of whether you want that person to be a part of your employment, uh, uh, staffing, or if you want that person to be a part of your independent contracting, or if you want that person to be a part of your relationship life. Or if you want that child to continue to reside in your household because division within a house can create chaos from very early on. And I do believe that uh, I think it was Ice Cube and Crazy Bones had a song and it was titled, um, oh, I forget the name of the song, but it talks about you send your children to school and they come back grown. That was the, the 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 takeaway, the lesson that I learned from that song. You know, he has a lot of things to say in that song. Um, but anyway, that is profound. You know, the influences of peers can be ridiculous when you have, you know, a set way of training your children and then that child or those group of children impresses upon them their lifestyle and then your child is looking like oh well that's not what I've been taught well what's over there they get inquisitive they get curious they get wondery and then before you know it your house is divided and conquered and all you have is chaos and all you have is stress and all you have is punishment after punishment that don't work and what happens when you get a child who is unpunishable You don't know what to do with that child, especially if you are following the rules and trying to do your best. You don't know what to do with that child. And then the only thing you can do is what you've been taught. And there's no guilt in that. And if it worked for you, then it should work for them. Now, I'm not talking abuse to the degree of where we were back in the day because that's all our parents knew. And I tell you what, it made us a greater being when it came down to what we are going to accept. I'm not going to accept those abusive uh, offers because I'm not going to give my parents anything to punish me or abuse me for. I'm not going to get that whooping because I know what I'm to do. And I'm just going to follow that chalk line. I'm going to do that. Yeah, maybe one or two, maybe three. (laughs) But it's not going to be a consistent abusive relationship to where, you know, a parent is coming in the door just because they had a bad day at work and they just smack you down. No, it's not that type of life. And these narcissistic entitled individuals tend to believe that all that is what they had. And it wasn't, it wasn't. So what if we are parents and we refuse to use our doors Uh, refuse to use our doors as a revolving door to come in and out like you're going into the bank to deposit or to withdraw and then you leave right back out with things that don't belong to you. Who in their right mind believes that that is consistent behavior when it comes down to a parent? No, just because, you know, a parent is lenient, just because a parent is, okay, let's talk about this, the situation gets worse and worse and worse because that individual child does not understand the value of who they are. And in that, 
how can you treat that child as though that is a child that understands the value of who they are? They may never get it. When the masks come off, entrepreneurs, leaders, when the masks come off, yeah, you're going to have your emotional points. You're going to have your times where you can't believe it. Well, you are going to have that time, whether it's with your parents, whether it's with your children, whether it's with your grandchildren, whether it's with your bosses, you're going to have, to, you're going to see. And when you see this thing, it's going to be so in your face, but it's going to make you grow. It's going to make a manifestation happen for you. And that's what these narcissistic, entitled, uh, selfish people don't want you to see. They want you to keep believing in the guilt. They want you to keep believing that you weren't the best parent. They want you to keep believing that you no longer uh, really took care of them. They want to turn you into a reprobated mindset that you know it's not true, but how could they see it this way? It's not them seeing it the way that it went. It's them seeing it the way that they chose to make it. While the masks were on, they took advantage of you. They narcissistically gaslit you. They made you feel good just to get what they wanted. And as soon as they got what they wanted, they went back to their old ways. Why? Because that's all they know. You remember how it happened when that person, your child, came into your house and promised you that they would get their lives together. And the next thing you know, they only did it to come in to steal your stash of money where they know where it's at because you took care of your family like that. And you said, okay, y'all want pizza. Y'all got to pay a bill. The water man come and get ready to shut the water off. It's okay. I got a stash of X amount of dollars and here's it here. Here's where it's at. Well, now when your child is being impressed upon by their peers who have that freedom to do what it is they want, oh, now they're going to impress those people. They're going to impress those people and blame you as a guardian, as a parent. Well, you shouldn't have left the money for me in the first place. It was mine anyway. And then what about the entitled adult children? Okay, so now you have these adult children who made their decisions for themselves and then sat back and want to blame you for whatever circumstances. Say, for instance, if you did choose to go on a trip to the Bahamas and you chose to, say you chose to um, go on a month-long retreat. And you couldn't leave that retreat and there was nothing that could be done. But life on life terms is happening back here with, with young adults who are faking it to make it like they're very mature, faking it to make it like, oh, I'm just going to do whatever she says I need to do in her face, but behind her back, I'm going to do this, that, and whatever. Well, then when all hell breaks loose, what happens? Family, what happens? This person now wants to sit there and blame you for what you weren't there to help them do. Oh, this could have happened. Oh, that could have happened. But if they had have used the mindset that they were portraying that they had, if they had to use the mindset that they were portraying that they really wanted, instead of doing one thing in your face as the guardian, as the parent, showing you all the good signs and all the good this and that, and then going behind your back, doing all kind of other stuff, stuff that you don't even still to this day know. And then when all hell breaks loose on that end, they want to come back and blame you for the mistakes that you were not there to help them not make. But guess what? If you were there, they wouldn't have listened anyway. Regardless of what, you would still always be at fault. And please remember that. Please remember that. Now, this is going back just to the basic living skills of uh, people who are dealing with life on life terms. And yes, this is for the entrepreneurs, because guess what? If your household is in a wreck and a ramble and a shamble and a shake, you're going to bring that to the business. You're not going to make the clear decisions as you would any other time. Half the time you're going to be in court. And the other half, you're going to be fighting a demon in your home. 
How can you then be a successful entrepreneur? How can you then be a successful leader in your life because somebody else is distracting you? How do you handle that? Please put that in the chat because that's a multi-million dollar question that I always wanted to ask. How do you handle that? How do you handle when all hell breaks loose and then now you are left with all of the remnants that you don't remember happening the way that it did? You really don't. And half of the time, the people engaging, if they would take out the manipulation and the selfishness and the uh, narcissistic ways of controlling, they would see for themselves. But you can lead a horse to water. You can make sure that your children are set up in a good way, financially, successfully, educationally, uh, financially, again, I said that already, emotionally, spiritually, and all that. And they still are going to make the decisions that they want to make. So I've come to the conclusion, family, that I choose to continue to just leave that in the past. I'm going to let that go because I led every one of my children to the brook, every single one of them, as well as the grandchildren that I were able to meet. I led them to the right path. It was up to them to make the decision to take it. And if they thought that, you know, you were there to pay the bills and front the uh, engagements to everything to take care of an entire wedding and to, you know, uh, have all kind of life insurance policies for inheritances that they were not even a part of. They haven't been a part of it because they were so busy running the street, deciding that they were going to reject parental guidance, parental guidance, parental guidance, since they were going to reject parental guidance. How do they feel that they deserve anything? You've already inherited everything in which you deserve for your part that you played in when it came down to being um, innocently protected as a child. You went outside of the parameters as a child and you went out there in that world. Look, Shrek, <laughs> Shrek on Walt Disney. When his mother and father sent him, put him with a backpack and at the age of seven and said, go out there and find your life. Go find your passion. I believe that, you know, that at first I was thinking that is so harsh. But if you are sitting here doing absolutely nothing with your life, having no passion, no type of creativity, no vision, no future in sight. Life has to bolt you into doing that. Some of us can just say, okay, well, I'll try this. Okay, well, that didn't work. I'll try that. That didn't work. I'll try this. Not, I'm not going to do absolutely. I'm going to do absolutely nothing. And I'm not going to worry about anything that comes about. Because I know I can always go back home and they're going to protect me. I can come with a sob story and they're going to say whatever. So when the masks come off, it is the hardest thing to see when you recognize the face behind the mask. It's just like the Wizard of Oz. When they sat back and they went in that box and they looked and they said, oh my God, it's you. <laughs> there is no wizard. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, you feel betrayed. <laughs> You feel betrayed. You feel, you feel abused. You feel, um, sometimes when you go back and you can look at the scenarios and the people you met and how that chaos and distraction caused other chaos and distraction, you start to see that the very person behind the mask was the one that introduced you to the person that wanted to be close enough to you in order to say that they got what they needed. Oh man. Remember that phone call you got? Remember that phone call you got many, many years ago? Let's say back in 2006, 2004, 2005, when everything was kind of iffy, it was almost going to shambles. 
uh, life was changing, transitions was happening, then all of a sudden something call, calls you and motivates you to the degree where you don't even know how this person got your number. You don't know how this person emailed you. You don't know how they found you on Facebook, but they just suddenly appeared. Be mindful of that. That's a setup from somebody in your past. Because the, uh, the only people that can hurt you are the people that know your next steps. You know, they're the only ones that can hurt you. A stranger can hurt you because they don't know what you have. They don't know where you are. Let me tell you, I had a property one day and I had all kind of everything in this, in, in this location. And I never had to lock the door. Why? Because no one knew the location. No one knew what was in there, but me and another person. And I told that person, if something happens here, it's not going to be a random act of theft. It's going to be a setup. And I am testing you. And sure and behold, nothing ever came up missing. Because when no one knows what you do, what you're doing, They don't know how to respond. They don't know how to react. And then with camera settings and things like that, things we didn't have in the past, now we can see. Now we can see when our children want to break in uh, and steal our our vehicles in the middle of the night and go party with adult men. Oh, there's another thing I want to talk about too before I leave this podcast because I just want to vent. I want to rant. I want to share with you some of the things that, you know, many people have talked to me about experiencing and some of the things I've experienced on my own. I want you to know to the fathers and to the grandfathers and to the mothers and to the guardians who are sitting there trying to push off their, their sibling, their daughters and sons. Okay. I have instances in in my own relationships with people where I've heard of grandparents, parents telling other people, oh, we need to hook our children up. We need to do this so they can have, you know, this type of gene. They can have that type of gene. I don't believe that that's how we should go. I believe people should have the innocence of meeting people when they want to, how they want to. This whole organized setup is totally bogus because who's to say that they're going to really care for each other? Look at the Swan Princess. If you go back to that story, when they were younger, they couldn't stand each other. Okay? Who's to say that as they grow into each other, that they're going to eventually come together like they did? They're going to have those struggles. They're going to have those those type of fears, those situations that come, obstacles that will cross their path. And who's to say that the other one is going to be as strong as the other one? You know, love in and of itself, it comes in its own unique pattern. So we don't rock the waves. And now I can see how a lot of parents um, went to R. Kelly and told R. Kelly, Here's my child. Just give me a couple hundred thousand and I'm cool with it. You can, you know, I I can see that because it's been done. It's been done in the regular sense of the layman terms of everyday people. You know, hey, I want them to meet up and I want, you know, just because they see someone going down a certain pattern, they think they see what they think they see. And so because of that, They want to secure the lifestyle of something as a person grows older so that they can always say that they were taken care of. No, that's not life. That's not living. It's not living. And I want to put that down to anyone who is considering that. That's not living. That's selling your your, uh, seeds off as though they are prostitutes. Please don't do that. Please don't do that because it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And and when it all is said and done, things don't go the way that it was supposed to. Now we have issues like what R. Kelly is dealing with today. So all of these chronicles of a nonprofit is truly embraced and embedded 
in the real life relationships of people who are entrepreneurs, singers, you know, musicians, actors, anyone, someone working a regular nine to five, someone just doing parenting skills in their own home. This, this validate validates that everyone is going through some form of struggle. So don't think you're unique. Don't think that you're crazy. You're not. Because when those people's masks come off, believe me, you, you're going to see the real them and you're going to fall to your knees. But that's what they want you to do just so they can sit back and tell you of all the guilt that they held for that moment. Because they knew that one day eventually you may actually recognize who they were behind the mask. They're going to want you to feel guilty. And that's the narcissistic ex expectation for you to be mirror reflected so that they can still get what they want, because that's what it's about. It's about control. And now, mind you, when you're a parent, you're younger. Yeah, of course you want to control the destiny of where your children are going. You don't want them out there be giving of themselves, giving of their bodies, giving of their, you know, especially things that belong to you as the guardian, just to give it away, just because they want to impress their friends. Hell no, you don't want that. And there ain't no way in hell you deserve that. There's no way in hell you as a parent deserves that. So understand this, that, that, that child had a mask on. That child was the demonic force coming in to try to destroy you before you even found yourself. But when the mask come off and that person decides that, yes, this wasn't a good thing to do. They're going to live their lives from that point on, not running away, not faking it to make it somewhere else, doing it to someone else, but being primarily in their lives, taking care of things that need to be taken care of, not towards the end of life when now uh, someone's on their deathbed and all of a sudden now they have a sense of, of character. No, they have that sense of character. Why? Because they want what is left. They want to know what they want to be in the know. They want to know who's doing what, what you got left, what policies you got. They want to know all of that because the mask is primarily halfway on. You know, you look at the Mardi Gras gala when they have one eye and then they have this beautiful side of them with the face and the fur and the feathers and the glitter and the jewelry and all that. But then you have one side that's halfway off. So you see the person, you can recognize that one eye, but the distraction of the beautiful headpiece, oh my God, it could distract you from even seeing the familiarity in the eye that's naked and open to you. So with that being said, the suggestion of today's podcast is to let you know that you are highly protected. You are genuinely loved by the Most High, and the Most High will continue to empower you and show you what those people wearing the masks, what their lives are all about. And yes, you may not want their lives to be about poverty, struggle, chaos, drama, friction, mental health. You may not want that for your, your loved ones, but that's the path they chose. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. So entrepreneurs, it is valuably important to love you. Build on your own self-actualization and recognize the eyes because they are the keys to the soul. And when we look into those eyes and we see the familiarity, when we see that this person has a different side and they're wearing a mask, many of us can discern. I mean, many of us have gotten to the point right now where we can discern through the mask, through the beautiful head, the head dress, 
through all of that, we can discern it without a person even opening their mouths. Because when they open their mouths, what will happen is the spirit will move right through them. And that demonic force will speak out immediately to show you who they are. So that way, they're so real with the raw uh, demonic force until they don't even care that you know. They putting it out there. They telling you they got a demon on their back. They're letting you know that to, to guide you because that is the most high protecting you. Do you want to keep dealing with this? Do you want to embrace somebody who could cuss you out one minute and then hug you the next? What is that? That's not love. That's not consideration. That's not respect. That's humiliation. That's embarrassment. That is concocting uh, uh, something that will take you down a path to make you completely reprobated. The mindset that, oh, I'm going to still help this person after they didn't try to. No, 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 no. You be on the lookout for that and be ready to tase they ass if you got to. But not allowing people to step beyond the area of perspective in your life is going to help you to make the decision of what you are going to put up with. No, you don't deserve this. You are not a part of this life. You are not a part of these people's lives. Fuck them. Fuck them. They are not. And this is an adult podcast. So I can, I, I can speak some truth today. You know, don't give a flying fig freak about a freak who does not care for themselves, whether they're your children, whether they're your significant other, whether they are, you know, someone who is all about, you know, uh, I'm going to help you with this, you know, even some, uh, even some independent contractors, all money ain't good money. Don't allow these people, don't allow these people to come into your establishment and determine how you're going to do something or you're going to get, you're going to do it for them. You're going to make it happen for them. Who the hell are these people? Who are they? And be ready for the force when it comes because you are ultimately protected. And I've seen it happen in my face many, many, many times where I'm like, oh man, now the mask comes off. What does what happens now? The next thing that happens is before I even recognize somebody then went to jail, somebody, what, how did that happen? What? They were just normal, you know, acting. Nope. They didn't show it off to the wrong person. The wrong person ain't putting up with it. Next thing you know, God just has it set up for the powers of the forces that work for the good of the most high. When you are a chosen one, when you are the prophesized one, everybody ain't going to like it because they're going to be like, how is it you? How is it you and not them? It's not them because they didn't put in the work. It's not them because they didn't fake it to make it. So nothing comes into the path. It's just like, it's just like uh, Hansel and Gretel. When Hansel and Gretel was going down that uh down that path, they were like, okay, we're going to take our bread that we should be eating and we're going to put it down here so we won't forget where we came from because they were supposed to go one way, but they taking shortcuts. They doing whatever they want to do. See, these little um, classic uh, fairy tales were there for a reason because there was a hidden message inside of it. One for the demonic person, one for the spiritual person. And, you know, within us all, okay, because we have the balance to do either or, okay? So now Hansel and Griddle is going down the path they're not supposed to go down. And guess what? The birds came. The nature came. They fed the birds who took away the path because they went down where they shouldn't have went. And that's these demonic forces and these people who wear these masks, who don't want you to see anything. All they want you to see is the, the depths of the soul. And that's even better. Forget the face. Forget the headdress. Look into the eyes of the soul. That's when you can tell if a person is trying to blanket you, cover you, 
gaslight you, um, empath, like, you know, empath you. <laughs> There's a path within that makes them want to vibrate with you because they see something good within you. And that's what's sad. Um, but you, you got to flip it. You got to flip that just like a pancake. It's got to be cooked on both sides. So I empower you, entrepreneurs and leaders, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. Recognize that. You may want what's best for your wife. You may want what's best for your husband. You may want what's best for your kids and for your uh, staff members. But if they're not genuine, if they're not real, if they're not true and they're faking it to make it, they're going to wear that mask and it's going to hurt you in the long run. Because the mask is going to come off eventually. And when it comes off, it can come off at the time you needed them the most. And when it comes off and then the guilt trip starts happening and they start start to empower you with their enlightenment of, of, of unnecessary demise, that's when the criticalness of everything is going to take place. And I don't want you to experience that. So I want you to be mindful of the soul. When you look into the eyes of a person based upon their actions, what are they saying to you? You know, some of these demonic dark energies don't even recognize that people can truly be happy and they are so messed up in their head till they literally genuinely thinks that a person who smiles is unhappy and they're faking it. That's how, that's how reprobated the mindset has gotten. And that's not real. That's not true. That's an illusion. And you have to make that recognizable in your mind that you don't lose yourself because someone else wants to put their forces upon you to empower you to do nothing. Remember, last podcast, we talked about the crabs in the bucket. When you're the basic individual and you're in the norm of the basics, and yet there is one who is still trying to climb up that ladder to be more, to do more, to have more, and then these people are all at the grass level and they're below the grass level. They're at the dirt level all the way down there. They're not trying to do the work. They don't even want the grass to grow. So they're going to stump on the grass to keep it. You know, this bring me into the mindset of the whiz when the black crows were around talking about you can win, you can get out of the game. And yes, you can get out of the game because it is a game. Why not not play the game? How about not playing the game and just be real? Try it. Try it. I dare you to try it. To just put all, all the fakeness down and just try to be real. Not fake it to make it and create something that has not established itself. You know, I see people creating documents showing that they have this degree, that degree, this degree, that degree. No, if you go through an experience my, 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 my incarceration was my dissertation. And that's how I became the doctor of leadership in that institution. No school can teach you that, but yet I did still go to a doctoral program and I did create that reality in my mind. So there is no faking it to make it. You have to go through these things and you have to be genuine coming out of it as well. So with that, keep being consistent, keep being determined, keep being ready and keep being on time because you're rocking the shoes you're walking in. Shine them shoes up, buff them up, baby. Get that dirt up off of them because, you know, we've been, you know, almost buried alive, but it's okay. We still here. So go clean them shoes up. And hold your head high and step with precision when you walk in and whatever you rock in, you know, because we are doing the damn thing and we are all that. Look how good we look. Y'all look how good you look. Look how good you look. Look in that mirror and just smile at yourself and say, damn, all that I done been through, this is what I'm looking like. Ooh, I'm all that. <laughs> but just don't walk around assuming to others that they know you're all that. You just keep that to yourself. 
That's a little personal relationship conversation you have with you to empower you and inspire you. And until next time, we will see you then.